हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू क्रिएटिव मेडिसिन इन दिस लेक्चर वी विल लर्न अबाउट हेलो फ्रेंड्स लेट अस नाउ लर्न सम इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट्स अबाउट रेक्टम एंड एनल कैनल इन द रेक्टम एंड एनल कैनल फर्स्ट वी विल स्टार्ट विथ हीमोरॉइड्स So what are hemorrhoids? Hemorrhoids are actually normal anatomical cushions. They are normal anatomical cushions. And what are these hemorrhoids made up of? They are actually made up of venules and arterioles. Hemorrhoids are made up of venules, arterioles. They are made up of smooth muscle fibers, and they are made up of elastic tissue. They are made up of venules, arterioles, smooth muscle fibers, and elastic tissue. Now, if you were asked what is the location of hemorrhoids, location of hemorrhoids will be there will be three o'clock position. Then we have they will be present in seven o'clock position, and they will be present in eleven o'clock position. Three o'clock, seven o'clock, and eleven o'clock position is where we found white white hemorrhoids. Then what about the pathophysiology? So in the pathophysiology on constipation, whenever the patient has constipation, the patient tries to excessively stain for passing stools. So when the patient stains excessively for passing stools, this will result in abnormal descent of anatomical cushions. It will result in abnormal descent of anatomical cushions. and this will lead to the injury by hard fecal matter this will result in injury by hard fecal matter and thus this will result in bleeding per rectum this will result in bleeding per rectum so if you were asked what is the most common cause of bleeding per rectum most common cause of bleeding per rectum is hemorrhoids Hemorrhoids are most common cause of bleeding per rectum. If you were asked what is the most common significant lower GI bleeding, most common significant lower GI bleed is colonic diverticula. Is the most common significant lower GI bleeding. If you were asked what is the most common cause of occult lower GI bleed, most common cause of occult lower GI bleed. is angiodysplasia is angiodysplasia or vascular ectasia most common cause of occult lower gi bleed is angiodysplasia or vascular ectasia then if you were asked what is the most common clinical features the clinical features are painless bleeding then if you were asked what is the amount of bleeding the amount of bleeding will be around 3 to 5 ml to a maximum of all around 10 ml then if you were asked about the diagnosis diagnosis are they cannot be palpated they can't be palpated because they cannot be palpated this will result in diagnosis number 1 they cannot be palpated therefore uh the hemorrhoids they are not diagnosed by digital rectal examination because they cannot be palpated so you should do what is the investigation of choice or diagnosis of choice is proctoscopy should be done for diagnosis of the hemorrhoids now let us now learn the types of the hemorrhoids hemorrhoids can be divided into types if you see we have two types of hemorrhoids one we have internal hemorrhoids second we have external hemorrhoids so what are internal hemorrhoids internal hemorrhoids are actually located above the dentate line they are located above the dentate line they are located above the dentate line that is in pain in sensitive region these internal hemorrhoids are actually they they will cause painless bleeding they will cause painless painless bleeding 
whereas if you see where are external hemorrhoids located they are located below the dentate line these external hemorrhoids are located below the dentate line because they are located below the dentate dentate line this dentate line is actually pain sensitive region because it is surrounded it is supplied by pudendal nerves so it is a painful bleeding so if you see this external hemorrhoid it is also called has 5 day painful self limiting condition that is because after 5 days the hemorrhoids will be cured by itself so whenever these external hemorrhoids can result in recurrent thrombosis whenever there occurs recurrent thrombosis in external hemorrhoids this will result in something called has semi ripe this will result in semi ripe black current this will result in semi ripe black current so next what about the treatment the treatment of internal hemorrhoid will mainly depend on the degree of the hemorrhage whereas the treatment of external hemorrhage will mainly uh, what do you do you will have to excise the external hemorrhage so treatment of internal hemorrhage mainly depends upon the degree whereas treatment of external hemorrhoid is by excision now we will see classification of internal hemorrhoids now the internal hemorrhoids can be now the internal hemorrhoids are divided into four degrees if you see first degree first degree has one bleeding only in first degree there will be bleeding only then we have second degree in second degree there will be bleeding along with bleeding there will be prolapse during defecation there is bleeding then there is prolapse during defecation this second degree is will also result in spontaneous dissolution then we have third degree third degree causes bleeding and it also causes prolapse of prolapse with manual reposition it causes bleeding with prolapse with manual reposition then we have fourth degree in fourth degree there will be bleeding plus you will have to do permanent prolapse but there, there might be permanent prolapse also along with bleeding there can be permanent prolapse so in internal hemorrhoids you will see first degree bleeding only second degree bleeding plus prolapse during defecation third degree bleeding plus prolapse with manual reposition fourth degree bleeding plus permanent prolapse can occur now if you see the treatment of hemorrhoids so in the treatment of hemorrhoids if you see first degree hemorrhoids these first degree hemorrhoids can undergo first you you will have to first advise the patient with dietary modification then you can give the patient stool softeners and high fiber diet high fiber diet these will resolve the symptoms of the patient that yeah, and also one more first degree patients or second degree patients or some cases of third degree patients first degree patients second degree patients and some cases of third degree patients in them you should do banding okay you should do banding then you should do sclerotherapy you will have to do banding and you should do sclerotherapy sclerotherapy is actually done with 5% phenol in almond oil sclerotherapy is mainly done in 5% phenol in almond oil then if you see in banding see this both blanding and sclerotherapy both banding and sclerotherapy both these are very cheap and these are effective these are very cheap and effective next time what do you do in banding in banding we will apply a rubber band a rubber band is applied to the hemorrhoids is applied over the hemorrhoids and a rubber band is applied over the hemorrhoids and after 48 hours 
After 48 hours, these hemorrhoids are sloughed off. After 48 hours, these hemorrhoids are sloughed off mainly because of ischemia. And these lesions will heal at the end. So this rubber band will stop the blood supply to the hemorrhoidal region. So because of ischemia, the lesions uh, will heal. Now, what about the third degree and fourth degree hemorrhoids? So the rest of the, the rest of third degree patients and the fourth degree patients in them we should do hemorrhoidectomy is done. Hemorrhoidectomy is done. So, what, which type of, what are the types of hemorrhoidectomy? There are many types of hemorrhoidectomy like we have Milligan Morgan open hemorrhoidectomy, Milligan Morgan open hemorrhoidectomy, Milligan Morgan open hemorrhoidectomy. Then we have Ferguson, Ferguson closed hemorrhoidectomy. Milligan Morgan open hemorrhoidectomy, Ferguson closed hemorrhoidectomy, then we have white field, white field submucosal hemorrhoidectomy, then we have Langos stapler hemorrhoidectomy. Then if you were asked among all these which is most preferred, this Langos stapler is most preferred method. And actually this is associated, this lang tango stapler method is associated with least post-operative pain. Okay. So these are the important points about the hemorrhoid. Now, what is the most common complication of this surgery? The most common complication of this surgery is pain followed by urinary retention. It is pain followed by urinary retention. So this is about the hemorrhoids. Thank you for watching. Thank you and thank you for watching.